this is Elaine Abanatha, McCracken TIS, and today we're going to talk about Google Sites. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that you are signed in to Chrome. And if you type in sites.google.com, it will take you there. If this is the first time you visited, you'll get some pop-ups that, that pop up just to try to give you some um, tutorials, but that's what we are doing today. So Sites has gone through a recent upgrade, and some of us who've created sites before are used to the older style, which is a little bit boxier, but soon they're going to push out the new Google Sites as, as for everyone. But So when I do a tutorial, I enjoy going through the new Google Sites because I think it's easier. So once you've done that, it's going to ask you, and this is just something that your recent sites, so you may have multiple sites here as well, and you're also allowed to invite others to help you edit a site if you chose. So if you're starting a new site from scratch, you'll go down to the plus, plus button on the right hand bottom corner. And it brings up a very basic site for, for you to start using. So we're going to take a look around some of these tools here. You've got your title page here and you can change your image and change your header type. So let's look. If we want to change our image, we're going to select an image. It also allows you to select it from a gallery that they have by, by your a URL, or you can even go straight into a Google search, your albums that you have inside your drive, or even your Google, Google Drive. So, and then your most recent. So we can go ahead and we're going to make a site on for a classroom. Select. Now you can change also the header type, which is, you can have a larger banner or just the title only, or and the larger banner of course has just got a, a, a larger depth. Now one thing that they've recently add, added is you can add your logo here. Okay, so if we're gonna add a logo, we can select, search, use a pencil and let's just say we're going to use this one that will show up over here for you you can make the background where it's transparent so that it follows along here which is pretty neat then also if your logo has a certain color you can use that color for your theme which is a new um, addition that they've got so while we're on the topic of themes you do have three little tabs on the right hand side themes is able to give you a different view of what um, and different styles that you can have for your web page and that's of course just a personal preference and then once you do pick your theme you can choose um, the different colors of, of the theme and the different font size now there is not a whole slew of different fonts that you can use but it's a pretty good little options here Okay, so we're going to title our page, of course. All right. And then now we're going to need to put some other things down here. So when I teach this, I always tell them, I'm like, well, anytime you need to add something, you're going to go to insert. So you're going to click the insert. You can select images, text boxes, embed videos, or upload something. So let's go text box and let's add... Now, one of the things that I like about using Google Sites is because it easily allows you to embed things that are inside your Google Drive. So, for instance, if I wanted to just use my schedule here and not have to constantly update my website and a, a document that I was going to use for my class schedule, I would actually have inside my drive, I would have a document or a folder that would be, that I would link everything to the drive or to my site. So I would say new folder inside your drive. So you're just gone back to your drive. So you have two different tabs. And inside that folder, I would say website. And then inside that folder, you can use your schedule. So you could use a Google Doc and you would maybe use you would link this schedule. So the, the benefit of this is, is that once you change your schedule here and you link it to your website, 
You don't have to go back and forth and change two different things. So that's definite efficiency. So you can make this as fancy as you want, but let's just say specials at 8 o'clock. I'm just making this up. Math 9. Okay, and then etc. Of course, you could add a theme and you can add a, a logo in the background. You could change the color of this paper, all those type of things. Change the color. You go to file, page setup, and then you can change your a page of your color here so if you chose to do that okay so we're gonna link this piece of paper over here and there are lots of things you could link but we are going to insert Google Doc there we go we needed to insert that I believe that way there it is okay so if we were gonna insert something from our drive, it would most likely be an image and it was not picking up the image and I'm not sure. But go ahead and make sure that you use the Google Docs when you're inserting right here. So now if I change my schedule here, it is a live document and when we refresh it, will show up and we might have to publish it first okay so another thing is is that we want to add pages so websites usually have of course they have different pages here so if we click this button here we can add a page and maybe we want to have class pictures all right so now we have our class photos page and you'll notice that it starts to go up at the top so they'll be able to click and, and navigate your site this way. And one thing I've, I've, I like to say is, is that when in the website, if we have a new folder for photos, and you get used to taking your photos of your class, doing those, that awesome stuff, I think of this as a virtual bulletin board. So you can have your photos in here, and then you upload those photos to here, and inside your site, you have, you insert from your drive that folder. It will actually allow your users to go into that folder and see those photos. So you don't have to go back and forth. You're not having to manage two different things and update a website. You're just making it a living website. So let's see. You can also do it. And these are ways to reorganize or to make things show up in and make it to scale it to if you want just it to be on the left side or the right side or whatnot. You can add a divider, which is here. Of course, then there's your trash button. And let's see what else we can do. We've got where we can add, insert a calendar. So if on this account, I have a class calendar on my Google calendar, oops, calendar.google.com. And I'm adding a calendar to this. Okay. I need to make this public, of course, so that people can see it. Let's see our access permissions. Make it available to public where they can see all events. And then let's, let's copy that link just in case. Let me go into the website and we want to go into embed our calendar and then it is going to let us embed this calendar right here and then this calendar is going to show events and that kind of stuff so you can have a class calendar as well 
One of the best things though also is, let me remind you, if you have a Google class, it automatically creates a calendar. So you could have each one of your classes and then embed automatically that calendar and then assignments, parents would be able to see updated assignments when they're due on that calendar. So as you make assignments in a Google Classroom, it goes to the calendar and you've embedded that and you're not having to constantly man a website and a calendar. It's all, it's all streamlining for you. So that's one of the things I love. Insert maps, YouTube content, and um, there's, we just spoke of calendar. So it's pretty basic and if you needed to this is the link for the unpublished, but once you publish it, and here's, I needed to say this too. So if you want to also have somebody where they can help you edit the website, so you're not the only one, you're just going to click their name down here. And we're going to add this one. Let's go ahead and not send a notification. Okay. That's just saying. And you can make it also where they change them to be the owner or where they can edit as well. So that works. So let's go ahead and publish this. And this is where you get to know whether or not what the website URL is going to be. So we're going to say and this is class site. Okay. And notice your domain is here as well. Anyone on the web is allowed to see this. And then we can have it where it's on a search engine like for Google and then we can publish it. All right, so if I want to get the link, you pop, copy that published link. If I wanted to jump over and see what it looks like, you can also always do that with that little eye that was up there. So this is what it's going to look like. So you've got your home, your different pages would be up here. And then here's our there's our calendar that we have, and then class, I'll go into our home. One of the things though I do want to make sure I remind you is when you publish, you wanna make sure that you publish always at home, so that's where your users, so notice this, we're just published, I published it in class photos, so let's redo that. There's our schedule. It shows up. There we go, and see it updated. Okay, so let's go back to the site really quickly. And let's go back to the home page. And then we will publish it. See that little eye there is where you can also look at the at how it looks for your users. Okay. And we're going to grab the publish link. And if I scroll, you see where it says home right here? That's how you know what you're publishing and know what you're doing. So one of the tips that I wanna show you is that if you go to your, you'll make a Bitly account, you're gonna be able to take this URL for your site. And that's a lot for people to type in. So I like to go over here. And once you've created it, you can, um, once you've created a, an account, you go ahead and click the orange button in the top right hand corner and you paste your your long URL and it gives you where you can make change the title so and then you can also change it so now and it is case sensitive and they don't allow extra characters so like apostrophe or the and sign okay and remember, your users are going to have to remember that it's capital A and capital C. So if you choose to make that even simple, all right, you can even make it a class. Let's see if that's taken. It is already taken. So somebody else's. There we go. So you want to try to also make it simple. So there we go. So if we copy that, now it's something easier for our users to remember. So it's bit.ly forward slash a b a n a t h a. All right, so once again, we're just going to go back over to that. Remember that you have, and then if you go back to your sites, you have editing abilities to go to each site so you have more than one. So here is the site that we just used. And 
voila, there you go. There's your basic skills. Um, let me know if you have any questions and happy creating.